Hi, welcome back to the Gap Search Channel. I'm Gabby. And I'm very excited today because I managed to get this TDA DAC project going. And it's right now on the prototype board right here, hooked up to a lot of goodies from Ian Canada, some great power supplies and a beautiful output stage. And it sounds really amazing. There are many projects out there that was built on the TDA 1541A chip and there's been some beautiful systems put together by other uh, fellow DIYers and they did such a beautiful job. But technology has changed since and now we have access to some amazing power supplies like the ultra capacitors and we also have an amazing output stage like the OPA 861 by Ian Canada. Also the streamer is top notch with great clocks. So all these put together make quite a different system than the system we have tried before. Even in the past, we managed to get some great, great results with the TDA 15418 chip. But now I think we're getting even better. I um, actually was blown away by the sound. And I'm not just saying that to exaggerate. All right, so what do we have here? If we zoom on the... Uh center here we can see that the heart of the system is the TDA1541 chip of course and beside it is the OPA861 by Ian Canada. Those two boards together work so well. Uh, the OPA861 by Ian Canada is probably the perfect match for this TDA1541. I've tried different scenarios and so far this one just blew me away. It's just Great. So right now I'm using a single channel here and uh, in the future I would like to use a differential board and have uh, both uh, sides uh, working. You can see that the uh, output, but it's only using one side of the OPA 861 instead of both dual sides and basically this is uh, going into an RCA. So in the future I'd like to use a balanced design into a differential, have two TDAs, 1541s, and, uh, and, and do that and uh, use the full potential of the OPA 861. So this board is truly amazing. What I like about it is it actually uses also plus 5 and minus 5 volt and because it only uses uh, plus 5 and minus volt Basically, so you can use a bank of plus 5 and a bank of minus 5 to supply both the TDA and the OPA 861. Now, of course, if you want, you can separate the two, digital and analog, by providing another set of things, but now you've got to have another four of these, so bear in mind that's going to take some more space. When you're using those big giant ultra capacitors, the UC Pure from Yen Canada is the perfect match to them. It was designed for them. It works with your streamer to make it go on and off and charge when it's actually not working. It's a very clever design and I will make another video about it again sometime. The TDA uses minus 15 volts. Don't let the minus 15 volts, it's basically 15 volts, you just reverse the wires. It's as simple as that. To get 15 volts in those big huge ultra capacitors, I need basically six of those. So another three like that. These are two, two and two. Another stack, but I already have four here. That's already 10. So that's a lot of ultra capacitor. Oh, we got a new visitor. Rusty's just checking the system. I think he's trying to tell me it's cold and I want to get back inside. So back to the um, these capacitors here. To get minus or 15 volts, you're going to need at least, like I said, six of those uh, ultra capacitor stacks. So that's a huge box. So this thing only like uses like, I measured it probably about 20 milliamps. So it's like very little use really. So what I'm using is I've just happened to have those Lissom iron capacitors. They are like half battery, half capacitors and they're rated for 3.8 volts. So four of these will give you about 15.2 volts. 
And uh, so, and I am running them with another UC Pure. Yes, a UC Pure can run more than just these big capacitors. You can pretty much run it on any ultra capacitor you want or anything similar to ultra capacitors. And uh, although these lithium ion capacitors are working great and I love them, but maybe in the future I could use something like bigger maybe. So you could use the six of those capa ultra capacitors array at 450 farads each or maybe something a little bit smaller than that. Depends on what you like. So it's, it's up to you and how much room you have in your case or the way you want to design it. Uh, some people might want to stack another six of those, go for it. Uh, but if your space is limited, you can basically use any size ultra capacitor you want as long as you give them a balancing board. So you need to balance them. And I am using this particular balancing board. I'll put a link for it in the description below. I just picked it up from Amazon. You can get those. This is an active balancer, actually. These can balance very quickly. Uh, but you could also get a passive balancer as well. You can get any balancer you want. As long as you get a balancer, at least you need to have something to balance with. That's very important. Uh, you can also use the balancer by Ian Canada, the one that are designed for the big capacitors. You could actually make some work for the uh, smaller capacitors of these, for example. You just have to get the pin out the same way. I mean, it's not rocket science. It's a plus and minus, plus and minus. You put them together and you can do that. So again, this is what I'm doing. I'm not telling you this is the best way to do things or this is the proper way to do things. You do your own research and do what you think is best for you and what's safe for yourself and for your house. But this is what I am uh, using. I try to stick with brand name capacitors because they are dangerous and you really don't want to buy the cheap knockoff stuff and you never know about the safety of those products. I'll put a link in the description below about all the different parts like the balancers I'm using, the UFL cables, the parts by E in Canada, the ultra capacitors, the lithium iron capacitors. Now bear in mind when you're choosing capacitors and what size to use, they have an ESR value and that's very important. The lower the better. For example, the lithium iron capacitor are about 100 milliohms. Those mid-sized ones are about 3 milliohms. The big giant ones are about 260 microohms. So it depends on what you're supplying. Maybe critical, maybe not, but often not. So make judgment for yourself. Also sometimes just making the wire shorter could compensate for that. So it all depends what you're designing, the size of the box you want them to go in. If you want to have a giant massive thing, you can, but just be prepared for all of that. Another thing to consider is the cost. These guys are roughly around $100. The mid-sized ones are roughly around $30. The little ones are around $10. So it all depends also on the budget. So once again, we've got the UC Pure here that you can see in my zoom in here. And that's basically running those lithium ion capacitors and the balancing board balancing them as well. And all this goes into here to the uh, 15 volt section of the TDA-1541A. TDA-1541A is not the only thing that's magical in this recipe and not just the OPA-861, which is a critical point, but another critical uh, component here is a streamer. The streamer by in Canada is probably the best streamer you can get right now. And the UC Pure clocks are truly amazing. They are a great upgrade to the streamer. Uh, as you can see here, this time I'm using, I don't know if you watched my other video about uh, the CD3 by Cambridge where I tapped into the I2S lines. I was using I2S lines from the GPIO, but this time we're tapping into the GPIO, into the uh, UFL uh, uh, I2S uh, output of the FIFO Pi, which is the best way to do it. And I'm using the UFL cables as well. And as you can see, they all go and they end up with the uh, TDA-1541 right here. 
So as you can see, that is the entire system. And uh, of course, uh, we need to tidy up a few wires, get things together. This is still a prototype, uh, everything is on a wooden board. So eventually, with some time, we're gonna get a little bit better and start uh, putting things in more nicer, maybe build like an enclosure or something. There's so many things you can do with this project, but so far it's been very, very encouraging. If you have any comments about this system, any ideas that you have in mind, if you have some experience with this chip, you've built something like this before, you've heard something, because there's so many ideas like maybe slowing down the oscillator, the DEM, uh, putting some large capacitors on the uh, instead of the small ones here that instead of the I'm using 313 nanofarad right now but there's so many different ideas uh, I would love to hear from you because I'm just experimenting and I'm learning myself and I'm not an expert I'm just like one of you guys so if you have any ideas that could help me that would be great because after all I'm not just building this for myself I'm building it for all of us to learn from this experience. So how does this thing sound, you may ask, compared to, let's say, my other experiment that I did with the four chips? This is different. This is set on a nice, pure level. I've taken some precautions, especially getting the I2S signal in, the power. We're using some, like I said, all these ultra capacitors and the output stage. So we've got all these put together. We get a whole different sound level. So now we're even at a high professional league of sound and I'm loving it a lot. The first thing about the sound that I love is the sound stage. It just opens up even more and it just has that sense of musicality. So I would say musicality and sound stage. And we did not lose like some other experiments with this kind of chip where there was quite a bit of complaints on the bass region. I do not have that problem now. The bass is not boomy and it's not floppy and it's not higher than the other ESS system. I would say maybe two, three percent, but not much. That's about it. It's more. And that's probably due because we're using, there's no, on the output stage, the OPA 861 is phenomenal. You don't need any capacitors. You don't need any transformers. And this thing beats any transformers and any capacitors. So when you have this pure sound coming, there is no oversampling, just coming straight, all tight, coming from great power supply, great output stage, and the beautiful streamer. If you haven't seen the streamer, I'll put a link in the corner above in the description below. There's a whole video about the streamer and how you can put one together, because the streamer is, I would say, the base of the system. I mean, all the parts are important, but having a good streamer is also important. And having a streamer that can actually deliver to the DAC and make sure that the DAC doesn't mess things up. Because I see a lot of people that have DACs at home and they want to they go and spend thousands and thousands on a streamer and the sound stays pretty much the same. And the reason why is your DAC is going to go reclock the system, mess it up with some lousy power supply, and then you're still at the same level. So the bottleneck may not just be the streamer, it's also your DAC. So it's important to have the two parts talking well together and not having one streamer do all these beautiful, great sounds and then to have it messed up again and output in a lousy output stage. So don't just think, oh, I'm gonna buy this beautiful streamer and pay $5,000 for it, I'm gonna get great sound. It's not just a streamer, it's a streamer and the DAC together. I'm gonna to put a link in here about 10 beautifully recorded songs that will showcase your system. In here there will be a link to a how to build a beautiful streamer just like this one and there'll be a speaker out here in case you'd like to subscribe to my channel and help me out. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and I hope to see you again in another video. Take care and see you again.